Now, it's all well and good that you could enter the London Marathon or the Boston Marathon or the Gold Coast Marathon and spend all this money on training, on your travel, on your nutrition, but some of us, we just want to run our first marathon on a bit of a tighter budget, or maybe this is one of your fourth or fifth marathons and you're just a bit tired of how expensive they've become. However, the first marathon that I ran back in April of 2024, I entered for less than £35 and all of my kit, training, nutrition, gels, all of that stuff, I think I got for under £200, maybe even less. So I've got the ultimate guide for you today on how you can cut costs and run a marathon on a tight budget. Let's get into it. So first, how do you find cheap marathons to enter? Well, Google is your best friend here. Honestly, the way I found this marathon that I ran back in April in Sunnymead Pleasure Grounds, which was a really beautiful park, I literally found it by going onto Google and typing in UK marathons or UK marathons near me. And I came across a website called Find a Race. So the website Find a Race is absolutely amazing for finding races. Now they've got races for everything in all parts of the UK and it will give you so much information on it, including the price, the location, what you need to pack, what you need to do to enter, all of that good stuff. That is the best place to find it and use the filters on it. Filter down a place near you because Picking a marathon near you is gonna obviously save you money on your travel. Maybe you wanna, instead of going for one of the more professional races, you could go for a more beginner friendly race. Well, that's gonna save you money as well because the entry cost isn't gonna be as high and I'm sure you will find a cheap one. I know I could, there's all sorts of running clubs around the UK who are hosting casual marathons and are just for people who want to run a marathon and, you know, have fun. So how to find cheap kit? This can be a tricky one sometimes because, you know, we'll look at running influencers and athletes on Instagram and they'll be wearing like 200, 300 pound trainers. We've got the bells on them and they've got the whistles. I'm not doing a very good analogy there, but you get the idea. Finding cheap kit is not as hard as you think. First of all, with your trainers, look on some of the blogs like Runner's World. They have budget friendly options in their best trainers for 2024 posts and stuff like that. Obviously, they're going to have quite a few on there that cost more than £100, but they also make some really reasonable suggestions. So have a look on there. Now, hear me out on this. You don't have to buy brand new running shoes. Now, don't get scammed with like a fake product, but go on to eBay or go on to Vinted or go on to Facebook Marketplace, type in your size of shoe and running trainer in the title and you'll be surprised that people are selling some really really good trainers that have only been worn once or twice but because they've been worn once or twice they're gonna sell them off for like half the price they got them for even better some people are selling their brand new running shoes and the only reason they're selling them is because they got them as a gift and they don't like them they don't like the pattern or the color or maybe they don't fit them very well but they might fit you great there's loads of options here you don't have to buy brand new trainers honestly I apply that rule to everything in my life. If I'm buying a new phone or a new Apple Watch, I'll just go onto eBay and search for like brand new, but out of the box or in the box or like open box. And you often save like a few hundred pounds on it. Clothing, again, go onto Vinted, Facebook Marketplace, eBay. People are selling some incredible brands like Under Armour and Nike and Adidas for absolute bargain prices all because they might have only worn it once and they don't like the fit but it could look amazing in you and you could have a great time wearing it so have a look on there and you will find some bargains and like I was saying before for a fitness tracker you don't have to get the latest generation of Apple Watch however you can get secondhand fitness trackers and running trackers of all different incredible brands like Garmin and, and people like that for absolute discount prices on places like Facebook Marketplace and eBay and I would say to you be a little bit patient with it. The first day you look on these websites for the trainers and the Apple Watch and the t-shirts and stuff, you might not find exactly what you're looking for, but that's because people have different schedules and there's always going to be someone new going onto Marketplace or eBay and listing their new products. So check every single day. The products will be constantly changing over and you'll be seeing new stuff. And while you might not get that pair of trainers today, you might get them in three days from now. So keep trying and be patient. Now, how to do running nutrition for a marathon on a budget. Obviously with your training and running the actual marathon, you're going to burn through so many calories and you need to get those back with 
calories with food. And food can be expensive sometimes, but it depends on where you shop. First of all, things like supplements and gels and creatine and gummies and bars and things that you will eat in your long runs and on marathon day and stuff. You could go for a really expensive brand like this one, or you could go for a way cheaper brand like this one. And if it's only one of your first few marathons, that's probably going to be good for you. I've been using these gels since day one. They're really affordable and they suit my body and my stomach really well. I don't have any like stomach problems with them. They taste pretty good, you know. So have a look on Amazon and look at some sports shops like Decathlon. Even supermarkets are really good with things like gels and electrolyte tablets. So hunt around for these things and you'll be really surprised what you can find on a budget. Number two, now if you know me, you know I'm a vegetarian and you know what I'm gonna say, eat vegetarian. This isn't an ad for being vegetarian, but generally with vegetarian meals, they generally, generally, are slightly better for you in your health and in your longevity. That's what the science says. You might not agree with me on that and that is okay. But one thing that is a fact is that it's generally cheaper to eat on a vegetarian diet than a meat diet. Why? Because meat and fish are becoming more scarce and it's more expensive to buy in the supermarkets now. You know, I only went vegetarian a few years ago. When I was a meat eater at university, I would still eat quite a lot of vegetarian dishes purely because I couldn't afford to eat meat and fish so try veggie and honestly if you get some good recipes that are high in protein and nutritious and lots of fiber and vegetables in you'll probably see a big improvement in your running as well but this isn't this isn't an ad for going veggie or going vegan you do what you feel comfortable with but i'm just i'm just saying I'm just saying, okay? And the third one is be wary of influencer recommendations. That influencer who does these amazing runs in, you know, like the French Alps or wherever, <laughs> I don't know if you can run in the Alps, and they've got a million followers, a million subscribers, whatever, they might be taking these gels and this protein powder and these electrolytes, and when you look on Amazon for them or in Holland and Barrett, you see that it costs like 100 pounds for a pack of one. Be wary, like just because the influencer that you love is taking it doesn't mean you have to take it and doesn't even mean it's very good often they're getting paid by these brands to advertise their product to their following that's why they've got heaps and heaps of this really expensive product because they're being sent them for free and also being paid to make posts out of them so be really wary Try not to get sucked into it. It's very easy to. We live in a very Instagram, YouTube, TikTok world. I get it, you know, I've made that mistake in the past. So I hope those tips helped. If they did, then click this video here. I know you will absolutely love this one. And if you wanna see more videos like this, then hit that subscribe button. I can't wait to see you in the next one and have a lovely rest of your day. See you later, bye.